Hi, my name is Netanel Ofer. I'm a postdoc at Columbia University in the lab of Professor Rafael Yustin. I'm going to talk about computational dissection of dendritic spines morphologies. Dendritic spines were firstly described by Ramon I. Cajal in 1888, showing the rich diversity of spine shapes. The spines mediate essentially all excitatory transmission between neurons, so they are critical for brain function. One of the open questions in neuroscience going back 100 years is if there are different subtypes of spines. Here, we will answer this question. In 1995, using calcium imaging, Professor Yuste showed that the spine had accumulated calcium ions. Recently, the Yuste lab demonstrated in vivo in mouse using voltage indicators that spine also isolate voltage. In the movie, we can see two dendrites with spines and the patch clamp voltage recording at the soma. There are three states back propagation of action potentials from the soma into the dendrite and the spines. You can see it now. Local dendritic spikes and activity only on the spine heads. We see that the spine morphology of the head and the neck is very important and govern the synaptic strength. We started by reconstruct mouse spines from electron microscopy. This work was done in collaboration with the Lichtman Lab at Harvard University. The EM enables us high resolution in the nanometer scale. At the left, you can see the segmentation and the dendrite and the spine in green. And at the right, we can see the same spine in two slices, red and blue, and from above, and the side view of the same spine. After the three-dimensional reconstruction of the spine, we used computer vision algorithm to separate the head and the neck. In previous studies, measurements of the head and neck were done manually, and usually on a two-dimensional projection image. Here, we used an automatic objective algorithm for that. For each triangle, or face of the mesh, we calculated the SDF and the skeleton radius, resulting in the sketcher plot at the right. Each dot represents a single face or triangle of the spine. This shows that the separation between head and neck is significant. We concluded that the vast majority of spines can be separated into head and neck. Next, we have shown that the morphological parameters of the head volume, neck length, and neck diameter present a continuous distribution without the separation into distinct groups of spines, such as mushroom, thin, and stubby spines. Here, using light microscopy, we analyzed spines for mice and humans. This work was done in collaboration with the De Felipe lab from Spain. The construction from the light microscopy is more challenging due to the resolution limit, but enables the analysis of a large number of spines from several animals. We developed a computational algorithm to repair the spine neck to enable the analysis of the spines. The separation of the head and the neck enables us to investigate them separately. Here, we compared spines from basal and apical dendrites in a 40 years old human individual. We show that basal and apical spines have the same distribution of heads, but the apical spines' necks are longer. At the right, we compared spines from young and old individual. We found the same distribution of neck lengths, but bigger heads in the 85 years old individual. Finally, we compared humans and mice spines. We showed that the human spines have bigger heads and longer and thicker neck. 
Note that the order of the difference is presented in a logarithmic scale. The conclusion is that spine compartmentalized calcium end voltage, that we found that the vast majority of spines have a distinguished head and neck, and spines present a continuum of morphologies without distinct types. On the confocal microscopy study, we saw that human ap apical spines have longer and thinner necks than basal spines, but the same distribution of heads. Finally, we showed that human spines have bigger heads and longer necks. Thank you for listening. <laughs>